Hi, Randy K7AGE. This is part two of my ZZRX40 kit building video. In this video, I'm going to cover the tools that we'll be using to build the kit and also identifying and inventorying all of the parts. And I'll solder the first part on the board. Let's get started. All right, let's look at some of the tools we may use to build this kit. On the left here, I have two examples of needle nose pliers, a very fine tip and I'm going to say more of a medium tip. We use these to hold parts and to bend the wire leads. And probably for this project, the medium nose, needle nose pliers would work just fine. On the right here are two examples of side cutters. We use these to cut the component leads close to the circuit board after we solder. Okay, I have a pair of pliers in case I need to hold or tighten something down. I have a pair of wire strippers. I'm not sure if I'm going to be needing them, but I am close at hand. A uh, little utility knife is handy to have in case I need to cut something or maybe scrape between a couple pads on a printed circuit board. And I have both a flat blade and a Phillips screwdriver. I've also read the instruction manual for the kit. I found a couple steps that I may need to make some voltage measurement checks. So I have my digital multimeter. A small adjustable vise is useful to hold the circuit board while you solder. This is called a third hand device. It's uh, just a little simple thing um, with a couple alligator clips that you can adjust. And this is real easy, real handy to have to hold, hold things when you need a third hand. This is the soldering iron that I'll be using for this project. It's a Weller uh, WES51. It's a variable temperature uh, controlled iron. And the iron itself uh, has a very small tip on it and fits in this stand. And there's a sponge here that I will moisten with water. And we'll use that to, to clean the tip off before we solder. So if you don't have a fancy soldering station, just a little simple soldering iron like this will work. It has a, a small tip, so I can solder things on the board without causing shorts. And this also has a switch I can select between 15 and also 30 watts. So this is the solder I'll be using. It's rosin core solder. You don't want to be using acid core solder like you find in the plumbing department. This is rather thin diameter. This is 31 thousandths, it says over here. And uh, you can also get this in uh, like 50 thousandths and 60 thousandths. You probably don't want to go much thicker than that because you, you may get too much solder on the joint and cause a solder bridge. We don't want to be breathing in the fumes from soldering. So this is a fan I bought on Amazon for $6.99. It's a USB powered fan. This is an old uh, 24 volt fan I found in my junk box. It works fine off of 12 volts. I've soldered on some power poles. So I can use these to blow the smoke away from me while I'm soldering. So in case I need to do some desoldering, I have my, my vacuum desoldering tool. So you heat up the joint down here with your soldering iron and you have this uh, pushed in, press the button and it will suck up the hot solder. Uh, solder wick is handy to have. This is a braid that you place on top of the solder joint with your iron and heat up and the solder will wick up into the braid. Very useful to have. I have progressive lenses in my eyeglasses and for projects like this I find a pair of reading glasses allows me to view closer and have a wider field of view. Uh, a little magnifying glass will be handy to have to read uh, the labels on some, some of the small parts. If you don't wear glasses, you may want to consider wearing a pair of safety glasses to protect your eyes from flying leads when you cut them, or maybe some flying solder. So I thought I would start with the inventorying of the parts. I have the parts list from the manual, and I'm going to start with the capacitors. Looks like there's about 21 capacitors here. I see it goes listed up to C21. So a lot of guys use muffin tins to put their parts in to help organize things for a kit build. What I'm going to do is use this cardboard box that I've made up and uh, I just cut it in, into this shape. I left a lip on the front here to make this a tray so things don't fall out. I put some tape in here to cover up, to tape up the seam so parts don't get, uh, don't slide underneath the flaps. And I've, uh, what makes this convenient is that the corrugated part of the cardboard is a convenient place to push the parts down into. And of course you can write the designations across the cardboard as well. And this makes it a convenient way to organize your parts for the kit build. I've got the bag here of parts I've showed you before. I'm just going to cut open this bottom section of the bag and dump out all the, oops, one more. There we go. And everything's out. So now we can start organizing. Okay, this is a little piece of cardboard it has five little capacitors mounted on it. And you only see four in the picture. 
and they're labeled 104K. So these are the 0.1 microfarad capacitors. Okay, this one's labeled 224K, and this is the 0.22 microfarad capacitor. So I'm just going to take this and stick it in the slot here by C9, C10. This is labeled 101J. So this is a 100 picofarad capacitor. This is labeled 181. So this is a 180 puff capacitor. And I'll place this over here for C1. Just want to note this is a lot easier to read using my camera. Otherwise you're going to need a magnifying glass. This is pretty small stuff. And this is labeled 821 uh, so it's an 820 puff capacitor now we got a big empty hole there for capacitors 3 6 8 14 and 16 but, but remember we have those all on this little piece of card so okay what's left looks like a bunch of electrolytics let's look at those now okay so this is a 100 microfarad capacitor it's electrolytic it has a positive and negative lead so polarity is going to be important and this is there's three of them, so it's C7, 13, and 15. So I'll pull all those out, and I'll put them up in the box. So I have these three capacitors. I'm just going to put those in the top up here. There's one, and I've looked at all these, so I know these are all the 100s. There we go. Okay, this is a 2.2 microfarad electrolytic, and this is C12. And put that in the C12 spot. And I have two of these 4.7 microfarad electrolytic capacitors. And these are C11 and C17. So i got a spot for those left. And this is the variable capacitor C21. So I'm just going to leave that in the bottom of the box. So that's all my capacitors. And I've gone through and I checked off that I've located and do have all of the capacitors. And now we can do the inventory of resistors inductors and diodes those parts all look to be in the second section of the uh, bag here so i'm just going to cut that open and dump those out in the bottom of the box here okay i have all the resistors out here on the inventory list now r1 and 2 these are potentiometers so they're not in this section so r3 and 10 are 10 ohms so i want to look for brown black black gold next i'm looking for one R8, uh, 1K, a brown, black, red, gold resistor. Next, we're looking for a 2, 10K. So this is a brown, black, orange. And the next one is the 1 meg, 1 million ohms. It's a brown, black, green. And the next, I'm looking for a 100K ohm. So now it's a brown, black, yellow resistor. So if you're unsure about reading the color code of your resistors, you can check it with your digital multimeter. Just put it in the ohms mode and uh, measure it. This is uh, labeled as a 100K resistor and it's measuring 99K. Next, I have three inductors to locate. One of the ways you can tell the inductors from a resistor, they kind of look very similar, although the inductors have green bodies and the resistors have brown bodies. So we're looking for a orange, orange, gold, gold, 3.3 microhenry inductor. Next, we're looking for the 4.7 yellow, violet, gold, gold inductor. And the last one's the 15 microhenry inductor. It's a brown, green, black, gold. And it's a good thing to check off. Should have done this as I identified each one, but I know I have all those resistors and inductors. Next thing is the diodes. Okay, the first diode, I'm actually looking for two diodes, a one in 5817 Schottky diode. And since there's two of them together here, I imagine this is what it is, but let's take a close look. Okay, if I can hold this steady enough, look at the, the top dial. You can see a 1, N, 5, 8, 1, 7. So there's those two diodes. And the other dial is a 1, N, 4, 0, 0, 4. And there's the, all the diodes. And this is real obvious as the LED. So I think the rest of the parts are all larger things, connectors and hardware and stuff. So I'm just going to dump all those out in the box here. And also get these out, this section here. So I'm just going to go through these quickly now. I'm looking for an audio jack. 
Next thing is a coaxial power connector. J2 is a BNC printed circuit board mount. So there's the um, lock washer and nut for the BNC. Okay, next thing I'm looking for is two 8-pin dip sockets, and those are in this plastic bag with the chips. So here are the two uh, sockets to plug the ICs in. And U1 is the NE602, and U2 is the LM386. U3 is a voltage regulator, and this is in a TO92 package. This is going to look like a little transistor. Looking for headers, and that's these little guys with the pins. So, two of the two pin and two of the three pins. There's another two pin. And there's another of the three pins. So I have both of those. I can check those two off. I'm looking for shunts. That's these little black guys here. Four of those. Uh, two knobs for the for the potentiometers. So one slide switch. Okay, one crystal are the two potentiometers. And then they just list. Uh, all the hardware for the cases. So here's some standoff and some screws and the circuit board material to make up the case. So I do have the printed circuit board for the kit and I do have all the shims for both the potentiometers and the LEDs. So looks like I have all the parts and I'm ready to start building. Looking at the instructions, the first part we're going to mount is one of these 8-pin IC sockets and uh, we have to know here, especially when you go to put it on the board, is that pin one is the pin up here in the top left. Here's a notch that's in the top of the socket. So the pin to the left of the notch is pin one. And you want to check to make sure the pins are straight before I try and place it on the board. And this is a place where you can use your needle nose and just give these a little bend to straighten them up. I will now place the socket on the board with the U channel facing up. Now we're looking at the bottom of the board and I'm holding the socket with my finger underneath, otherwise it'll fall out. And I'm just going to use my X-Acto blade to bend over a couple of the pins to hold the socket in. So an IC socket, what we're going to do is solder one pin first. So I'm just going to put a, a dab of solder on the iron to help with the heat transfer. And brace it on one side of the pad and the pin is on the other. And your solder will go and nice silver looking it fills the hole. So next thing I'm going to do is put my finger on the bottom side of the printed circuit board on the socket. And just in case it has moved away from the board, I'm just going to heat this up and let the socket slide up against, against the board. I'm checking to see if the socket is down flat on the board, which it is. So now I'm all set to solder the rest of the pins. And now I'm going to solder the rest of the pins. Again, the iron goes on one side of the pad, the solder on the other. Let it wake up till it's nice and silvery. I'm just going to retouch up this first one. And I'm just going to heat up at the junction. Let the solder fill the hole. And then I just kind of slide it up the lead. Just use a tiny bit of solder. I have my fan going, blowing the smoke away. I'm just going to put a little more on this one here. And here's a close-up of the bottom of the board. All eight pins appear to be soldered uh, without any problems. I don't see any bridging between the pins, so... I have my first part soldered on the board. So that's all for now. In the next video, we'll keep soldering parts on the board for the ZZRX-40 40, 40 meter direct conversion receiver kit. Thanks for watching. This is Randy, K7AGE.